Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to change out the uh, rear shocks on the uh, Kenworth T660. Um, we did a video a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, when we did the front shocks, um, right after I got new steer tires. Um, I just had an airbag that was leaking, and we changed that out. And uh, when I was underneath the truck, um, at the time that I found that air leak, I noticed two of my shocks were leaking, which is a, a DOT violation. I don't know if it's an out of service or not, but I know. That's one of the things they're looking for is the shock sling because it can affect the ride and the handling of the truck. And also, I mean, if you're an inner operator and um, you're concerned about tire, tires are pretty expensive. So, I mean, it can cause abnormal tire wear where they'll start cupping the stuff once you're, uh, once the shocks go bad. I mean, I would recommend every 50 to 100,000 miles, depending on the, the shocks that, what the quality of the shocks that uh, you're using to, to go ahead and change those out. But uh, today, I mean, uh, we're gonna, what you're gonna need for this, uh, I got an electric impact here with a 15-16 socket, maybe different on your application as far as the size. 15-16 wrench and a big set of channel locks or if you got a pipe wrench in case uh, they're kind of stubborn and you got to hold the shock. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with the, taking the old one off. Um, I, I've been getting aftermarket shocks. Uh, Packar, I think these, the Packar shocks at the dealer are about $100, maybe a little bit more each. Um, I crossed them. You can find the number right on the side of the shock if it's a pack car. Um, right here on the, the sleeve, you can see where it says pack car. Right underneath that, you'll see a, usually a C. This one's a C71 1017. So that's the part number. You can just Google that. And uh, mine came up with, uh, like I said, I got these Gabriels. And these are the nicer adjustable ones, the, the higher performance shocks. And uh, that particular shock uh, came up as a. 89455. So I think the standard Gabriels are an 850, 85059, I believe. I think that's the, the ones that are a level under these. But um, like I said, you always have to get your number and cross those. And then, um, like I said, I got these on eBay delivered to the house for $50 each. So I got all four of them for $200. And I think they're probably a better shock than what the, uh, the, pack, the stock pack cars are. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get this guy off and put the new one on. So, so like I said, it's best to use an impact on these if you can. I mean, I'm not going to be able to get, because of the, the height of this electric impact, I won't be able to use it on the bottom unless I jack the truck up, and I'm not going to get into all that today. But um, if you got an air impact, it'd be a lot shorter than what this, one, this unit is. Wanting to spend the whole shock. So let's go ahead and get a hold of it. And that nut is probably extremely hot. <laughs> I'd be careful touching it. So, and um, when you get your new shocks, make sure they have new hardware. So you should have uh, four washers and um, four uh, rubber bushings, and two new nuts for each shock that you have. So you just discard this old stuff. Take the bottom off, and as I said before, with the I can't get that impact in there, so I'll just use that wrench and wrench it off by hand. The same thing on the bottom as it is on the top, basically.
get it out of there. Yeah, because you have to collapse it to get it out. Or actually, um, right now our suspension is collapsed. Um, our air suspension. So I may have to start the, the truck up and, and lift up the suspension to get it out of there. Is what I think is going to have to happen. Yeah, we'll have to start the truck up. So, well, we'll have to, the truck's completely empty on air right now, so I'll go and start the truck up and uh, let it air up and raise the suspension up, then we can pop that guy out of there. It's going to take a while. Okay, so we went ahead and uh, aired the truck up and lifted the suspension and uh, basically once you do that the shock air just did a fall right out the old one so and that's that so now we're going to put the new one in oh, sorry and these are adjustable and um, right here you can see there's a selector arrow down here on the bottom and you just line that up whether you you have to collapse it and you know, have to use two wrenches and it'll click you have to you know it's got a direction so you have to turn it that way until you you can put it on a regular ride firm ride or extra firm um, i'm gonna leave this i'm gonna try it on firm you know, i guess the the r the regular is, is what your oem shocks would be but um, like i said we'll, we're gonna give firm a try this time around all your hardware out now we'll start with the bottom so you don't want to put that on where that's dished down put one of the bushings on let's go ahead and set it down in there and then we'll do the same thing and put a nut on the bottom I put that on upside down, so I just wanted to make sure with that little chamfered edge, you want that to go into the um, into the hole. So both of those, basically this will go in, you'll stick it in, then you're going to have this like that, then you're not on, that's how that's going to go together. Got that started. Now we're gonna put the top on. Then you'll just have to. It's gonna be pretty tight. <laughs> it's pretty easy if I get in there. <laughs> so you have to pull it up. Got a lot more resistance than the the one that came off. That would be the point. <laughs> I 
All right, now these do have, um, when you're tightening them, you don't wanna, you wanna make sure you're not twisting it because it's, one, it's gonna screw up your setting on your, I mean, if they're an adjustable, but I wouldn't recommend spinning a shock anyways, a new one, because you could tear something up in there. But these have a place where you can put a wrench on them or you could put a, a channel lock or something right here on the top where it's welded or on the bottom, whatever side you're doing. And I believe this is a different, it might be the same size. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Let's hold it so it don't suspend. There you have it. So then I'll just do the same thing on the bottom. Obviously, I'll have to tighten that one up by hand. But um, other than that, that's pretty much the job. So, pretty simple. So, and, um, so if you can find the chalk, shocks cheap, uh, you can save a little bit of money there and hope it helps out. Thanks. <laughs>